Hey, at the moment I am reading The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, A History of Nazi Germany by William L. Shire, a 1960 uh, book of history, which, you know, it's, it's geezily old at this point, but is still considered, I believe, one of those, these classics. Uh, and I mean, one of the things, other than it seems to be extremely well written and well told, is that William L. Shire was a American correspondent, uh, news reporter, in Nazi Germany during the during the events that he is writing this history book about. And while he is very much able to take kind of a historian's viewpoint on things and give you kind of the big picture, he's also able to kind of drop in uh, through this, you know, he stood next to some of these guys at like various rallies. He knew, he knew what these people were like in person. He, you know, he saw Hitler speak, all this sort of stuff. He, he was aware of what it was like on the ground to be in, uh, Germany as it was Nazified. I've only gotten about 30% of the way through the book at this point, but I thought I'd stop and read out just the beginning of this, uh, section. It just starts in chapter 11, which is, uh, Angelus, uh, the rape of Austria, because it, 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 it doesn't veer into the autobiographical that often, but this is one of these occasions where it did. Towards the end of 1937, due to a change of jobs from newspaper to radio reporting, my headquarters were transferred from Berlin to Vienna, which I'd come to know as a youthful correspondence, a decade, correspondent, a decade before. Though I would spend most of the period of the next three crucial years in Germany, my new assignment, which was to cover continental Europe, gave me a certain perspective of the Third Reich and, as it happened, set me down in those very neighboring countries which were to be victims of Hitler's aggression just prior to and during the time of, during the time the aggression took place. I roved back and forth in those days between Germany and the country that, for the moment, was the object of Hitler's fury and so gathered a first-hand experience of the events which are now to be described, and which led inexor inexorably towards the greatest and bloodiest war in man's experience. Though we observe these happenings at first hand, it is amazing how little we really knew of how they came about. The plotting and maneuvers, the treachery, the fateful decisions and moments of indecision, and the dramatic encounters of the principal participants which shaped the course of the events took place in secret but beneath the hidden the surface, hidden from the prying eyes of foreign diplomats, journalists, and spies, and thus for years remained largely unknown to all but a few who took part in them. We have to wait for the maze of secret documents and the testimony of the surviving leading actors in the drama, most of whom were not free at the time. Many landed in Nazi concentration camps to tell their story. What follows, therefore, in the ensuing pages is based largely on the mass of factual evidence which has been accumulated since 1945. But it was perhaps helpful for a narrator of such a history as this to have been personally present at its main crises and turning points. Thus it happened that I was in Vienna on the memorable night of March 11th, 12th, 1938, when Austria ceased to exist. So yeah, that is from uh, The Rise and Fall of uh, the Third Reich by William Shire. And yeah, I think it gives you kind of a kind of a crucial kind of flavor of the book that while the book is going to look at like all the stuff that became relevant later, it's told from the perspective of someone who just who didn't know what was going on at the time, that all this was just frightening, um, o opaque and uh, the, the confusion, the, con the mass onrush of events that happens that is real life versus the more measured, ah, we can pick, we can, we can look, dip into uh, key people's minds uh, of what they were perhaps thinking at the time or know later. Something that we can't, that God's eye view that history gives us, but told from the vo point of view of someone who is very much a single point of view at the time when the events actually took place. More videos later.